so you have those sort of kind of anti-realist views. And I think like the best argument for moral realism is that all the anti-realist views are obviously false. So like, you know, you have air theory. They say, well, it's false that it's wrong to torture people. And it's like, no, no that, that doesn't seem false. That seems true, actually. So yeah, anyway, so then you have the non cognitives who say, no, it's neither true nor false that it's wrong to torture people. Like, no, it seems true that it's wrong to torture people. And then you have the non cognitivists and they say, or the, the subjectivists, and they say, well, it's, it's wrong to torture people because we don't like torture. And it's like, what? I didn't make torture wrong by not liking it. Torture would be wrong even if I did like torture. So, so anyways, that's sort of the argument for realism in a nutshell. Yeah. And you might think, like, why in the world does anyone accept it, accept anti-realism? So, I mean, one of the reasons it is they haven't read my book, right? So, yeah. So, and there are other kind of obvious conclusions in ethics. So, like, there's an obvious conclusion. It's wrong to inflict vast amounts of pain and suffering for the sake of small benefits. Yeah, that seems right. Then turns out that when you eat meat, that's what you do, because the animals are really badly mistreated. They're treated in ways that we would call torture, and we would call torture if they were done to humans. Yeah, so anyway, so, yeah, so it's inflicting a lot of pain and suffering for the sake of small benefits. I think that that seems wrong. 